Hello, welcome to the introductory lecture for lab assignment number five. Lecture material for this lab assignment is primarily lectures 12 and 13, and the related educational materials in written forms are primarily sections 1.8.0 and 1.8.1. I previously indicated that the associated lecture material for this lab assignment was lectures 12 and 13. That is the operational amplifier section of our lecture so far. Now, this lab assignment's goals are actually more all-encompassing than that. What we're going to do is use an operational amplifier circuit, but we're going to use that as part of an overall complex system design. So we'll be using material from a number of previous lectures and a number of previous lab assignments. The goal is going to be to design either a temperature or a strain measurement system. There are two versions of this lab assignment. One is to do a temperature measurement system. The other is a strain measurement system. The design approach is virtually identical for the two systems. I'll be demonstrating the strain measurement system in this lecture. The design requirements for this lab will actually force us to use multiple subsystems in an overall measurement system. So we're going to get some practice at designing individual subsystems, which will then be put together to perform an overall task. Now our design requirements are going to be that our output voltage from our temperature measurement system or our strain measurement system is going to be either positive or negative relative to some nominal condition. We also want a relatively high sensitivity on the output from this system, which is what's going to require us to use an operational amplifier stage to amplify the output from the sensor system. Now, a quick overview over the overall system is that we have some sensor which provides a resistance change resulting from a change in some parameter. For example, for a temperature measurement system, we'll use a thermistor to indicate temperature. For our strain measurement system, we'll use what is called a strain gauge to convert a deflection or a deformation into a resistance value. What we're going to want out of this is an output voltage which is very sensitive relative to some change in the parameter which is being measured. So we're going to need two subsystems. The first one is going to be to convert our resistance change to a voltage change, which is consistent with what we've done for our temperature measurement system in previous lab assignments. However, we're going to need more sensitivity out of this overall system than we were able to achieve earlier. So we're going to add another stage to this that takes that voltage change and amplifies that to increase the sensitivity of the overall system. In block diagram form, our system is going to essentially consist of three pieces. The first part is going to be our sensor. It's going to take the sensed parameter, either temperature change or deflection, and convert that to a resistance. That block is either our thermistor or our strain gauge. In the next stage, we want to take that resistance change and convert it to a voltage. What we're going to use for that stage in this lab assignment is what is called a Wheatstone bridge. There are several reasons for using that. One of them, one of the primary ones, is that you can modify this bridge circuit to compensate for outside influences. One big problem with measurement system design is to make the output respond to what you're trying to measure and not make it respond to anything else. For example, for a strain measurement, you want the output voltage to change as a result of deflecting something, bending the strain gauge, essentially. Now, it's very common for that output resistance from the sensor to change as a result of, say, temperature changes. As the temperature changes, the resistance of the device changes. You don't want it to respond to that. There are Wheatstone bridge applications which will allow you to reject temperature changes so that it will only respond to deflection changes. Now, the output voltage from the Wheatstone bridge is typically going to be fairly small. Okay? There's not going to be much sensitivity coming out of the Wheatstone bridge. So what we're going to do is use a difference amplifier to change that voltage variation into a higher voltage at the output of the overall system. Now, we've had a little bit of practice with amplifiers in the previous lab assignment. We're going to use a different amplifier circuit in this one for reasons that I'll explain later. Now, for the sensor stage in our overall system, the first thing we're going to need to do is characterize the sensor. We want to get an idea as to how the resistance changes as a function of the input parameter. So what we're going to do is measure the resistance variation resulting from 
some variation in the input parameter. For a thermistor, we've done this before. We're going to change the temperature of the thermistor and see how the resistance changes. For a strain gauge, what we're going to do is deflect the strain gauge and measure the resistance change as a result of that deflection. That resistance change will then be used as an input to the next stage to do the resistance to voltage characterization. This is the system that we're going to use to create a strain and measure it. I have this little beam which I can bend to create a deflection and a corresponding strain in the beam. There is a strain gauge mounted to the beam. I've just hot glued my strain gauge there. That's an extremely bad way of doing this. But we're not trying to get an accurate strain measurement. We're just emphasizing the electrical side of the system design. This is our strain gauge. I've hot glued the strain gauge to this beam, which is an extremely bad way of mounting a strain gauge. However, we are not trying to get an accurate strain measurement. We're just trying to understand the overall system design, particularly as it corresponds to the electrical side of the world. The strain gauge has a little wire that works its way back and forth inside of here. As I bend this beam, the length of that wire changes slightly. It stretches that wire, which results in a resistance change between these two output leads. So if I measure the resistance across these leads, that resistance will change as I deflect this beam. It will go up in one direction. It will go down in the other direction. Now we can measure the variation in resistance of the strain gauge due to some deflection change. That will be our characterization of the sensor itself. I'm going to use my DMM to measure resistance. My resistance change is between the red and the black leads of these wires. The white lead is actually not connected to anything on the strain gauge itself. It's used in alternate Wheatstone bridge configurations to balance the bridge and make it insensitive to temperature changes or the actual resistance of these wires itself. So checking for the resistance across these leads, I'll hook up my DMM. So in an undeflected condition, I am getting about 120.5 ohms of resistance. That's very reasonable. This is a nominal 120 ohm strain gauge. Now, if I change the deflection of this strain gauge, that resistance will change. If I push this all the way down, I go to 121.2 ohms. All the way up, I get 119.7. So I'm getting 5 to 7 tenths of an ohm change through my full deflection of this beam. Now let's take a look at the Wheatstone bridge circuit that we're going to use to convert this resistance change into a voltage variation. We're going to use a Wheatstone bridge circuit to convert this resistance change to a voltage change. Now, we're going to need to apply voltage to this bridge circuit in order to do this. V sub S is some external voltage supply. Now, we have three essentially fixed resistors, R1, R2, and R3. And then our sensor forms the final resistance in the Wheatstone bridge. Now, equations that govern the Wheatstone bridge are in an appendix of your lab assignment. Essentially, what we want is for VAB to be 0, okay, the voltage difference between nodes A and B, we want to be 0 when the sensor resistance is at its nominal value. Now, there are equations in the appendix as to how to balance this circuit. Ideally, what you want is the ratio of R1 to R nom to be the same as the ratio of R2 to R3. So if I pick R2 and R3 to be the same, then I want R1 to be about the nominal sensor resistance. Now, it's tough to pick a fixed resistor that's going to be exactly the nominal resistance of the sensor. So what we're going to do is actually implement a variable resistor at R1 that we can change the resistance in order to balance the bridge. Balancing the bridge means that we are getting VAB to be 0 at the nominal resistance. So when I demo this, I'll show you how I chose to create this variable resistance, R1. 